Yeah. So first, thank you, Mira, very much for inviting me. The second time you invite me to Madrid. <laughs> it's great to be here. Here is still summer in Germany. We have autumn. So uh, people ask me to bring some of the good mood to uh, back to Germany. Um, great to be in Madrid again. Um, German elections. Uh, everybody's asking what's what's going on in Germany. Um, is there new instability? There is a new party, AFD, a right-wing party elected in Parliament, with as the third largest party in Germany. Um, the SPD refuses to enter into a coalition again with Merkel, so we have kind of turmoil in Germany um, at, uh, at a time where German stability is very important to Europe. We have a new French um, president who just gave his big Europe speech yesterday. We have Brexit going on. Uh, we have a more unstable world with um, many question marks over the role of the U.S., uh, given that Trump is obviously not interested to continue with the role the U.S. had in the past, or at least we don't know. Um, at the same time, there was just during the German campaign a big Russian maneuver going on in Belarus and Russia, um, Zapad. Um, so, and then we have, of course, what Macron talked a lot about is, is yesterday also about uh, anti-terror operations in Syria, Libya, we have migration, so plenty, plenty of, of issues on the table of Chancellor Merkel in the Chancellery, but she cannot start to address this right now because there will be a prolonged um, time, several months, where she needs to figure out how to bring you know, the power machine in Germany back on track. Um, I'm personally uh, more optimistic than many um, Anglo-American uh, commentators. Um, I think this is uh, the center holds, there is stability. Uh, first Merkel will run the next government again. And I don't think it will for her be much more difficult than with the current uh, coalition partner SPD. SPD um, is a big party. In, in, in the past there were two big parties in Germany. One is Merkel CDU, center right, and then you had SPD, center left, uh, the party of Willy Brandt, uh, Gerhard Schröder, Helmut Schmidt, and then the party of Adenauer, Angela Merkel, and of course Helmut Kohl. Um, this is changing a little bit, but you had the Grand Coalition, you had it two times from 2005 to 2009, and then from 2013 to now. So you, you had eight years of Grand Coalition, uh, where you had on the one hand stability, but on the other hand you had the center-right party moving more towards the center, towards SPD. And now SPD says we must stop this, we are losing our constituency because C Merkel CDU is so much at the center right now, uh, if we, we need to go into opposition and re recover with our 20%, which is a his historic low. Um, but for Merkel, SPD was a challenge because it has been a big party and has, has been a big player, especially on everything uh, concerning Russia. Um, Steinmeier, the former um, foreign minister, 2005 to 2000, uh, sorry, I, um, 2009 to 2013, um, and, 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 and then 2005 to 2009, 2009 to 2013, excuse me. So SPD has been a party that was always very keen in keeping, maintaining good relations with Russia. The whole Russia policy of the EU has been very much um, uh, developed by Steinmeier. Uh, Gabriel also recently talked about relieving uh, Ukraine sanctions, even without uh, Russia fulfilling the Minsk. Um, agreement, so there was always a balancing act for Merkel uh, on foreign policy. Uh, on EU f uh, policy, I think we had a, a large agreement, even if people say now, oh, well, SPD is much more pro-EU or much more ready to work with Macron. I, I don't think it, 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 it's, um, um, you know, it holds, holds scrutiny. The SPD has a different rhetoric, but uh, Martin Schulz, who was uh, challenging Merkel right now, 
during this campaign, he didn't run as an as an former president of the European Parliament. It was almost as if he were hiding this. We, we had no debates about the EU during the campaign. He didn't say, I have international experience. He always referred to himself as the former mayor of a small city in Germany, uh, uh, Würselen. So um, it was a little bit strange. Uh, so that's why I think SPD rhetorically is more committed towards uh, EU integration. But in, in practice, we saw um, Germany and, and SPD, you know, at CDU and SPD working in, in lockstep on the EU, and, and I don't see much of a difference. And so now, now probably the Greens and the Liberals, FDP. My, my thesis is that it will be easier for Merkel with them because, well, you have two, two smaller parties, half as big as SPD, uh, new in government, mostly unexperienced. Um, the, the, the people who are likely to enter government from those parties have no um, national uh, experience in, in government. And Merkel can balance both of them, probably. Um, this is this is the longer term experience uh, um, expectation. In the in the short term, it will be more difficult because um, both small parties, the Greens and FDP, have to deliver to their own constituencies. So they have to demonstrate that they extract something from Merkel. The Greens, something on the environment. Uh, um, Probably and and also uh, it's the mere, uh, the one of the the, the main uh, people in the Green Party who who may become the foreign minister said uh, it's a, our priorities are environment and and social equal um, uh, fight against inequality so something on those issues and then she has Merkel has to satisfy FDP mm, FDP in the past was running very much on um, lowering taxes. This is something they didn't talk about this time. Um, we know that Lindner talked about uh, the EU, no transfer union, but already on the evening of the election, his rhetoric changed, and we could see already that he is ready to compromise here as well. Um, so the negotiations, but they will take some time because both parties need to show to the to um, their constituencies that they are not, in, you know, that they are not that they can get something and not selling out their party programs. Okay, but then you will have a new government, and I think it will be stable. It will be broadly pursue the same policies as um, as the past government did. This is the Merkel strategy um, internationally, um, but also domestically, which is um, continuity, which is um, staying at the center, but not just on geographically, but also on most issues balancing between East and West, North and South, uh, keeping everybody engaged, and uh, rather doing, uh, um, having a piecemeal male approach to things step by step, uh, instead of coming up with uh, grand designs and uh, architectural plans, uh, as Macron is doing right now. Um, generally, Germany is probably moving towards a new system where we have uh, many parties at the center. We have CDU, the Bavarian sister party CSU. So in Bavaria, there is no CDU, there is CSU. They are more on the right. Uh, so we have CDU, CSU, we have the Liberals, FDP, with Lindner uh, entering government. Probably now we have the Greens. We have SPD, so we have five parties more or less in the center. They all will have uh, been in a coalition with Merkel. They will all be part of the centrist uh, majority, which is uh, may certainly three, let's say two thirds of, of Germans sign up to um, this 
centrist majority, probably 80%, even more. So, so there's a lot of stability. Germans are happy with their economic situation. Um, and Germans are happy with Merkel. There was just a recent poll where, which said, I think 57% uh, want uh, Merkel as a chancellor, so after the elections, and a large majority in favor of this Jamaica coalition, uh, CDU with FDP and Greens. So a lot of stability, of course, prosperity, um, that's, the, that's under, under girding the political system. So we'll have, instead of a two-party system, the old Bundesrepublik, left, right, CDU, SPD, will have rather a broad center. And then we have two parties on the fringes. On the one hand, we have Die Linke, which is, uh, has, been, has emerged from the former governing party in the GDR in Eastern Germany, the Communist Party. Uh, this is Die Linke. They, they, it's strong in, in, in Eastern uh, Euro, in Eastern Germany. I just saw um, a statistic that voters in Eastern Germany are rather old, so you could um, uh, assume that younger people have uh, migrated to the West where there are more economic opportunities and there are more older people who vote for Die Linke and for the other extreme party on the right, which is the AfD, which has um, uh, made much many gains in, in, in Eastern Germany. So you have basically in Eastern Germany you have CDU, Die Linke and AfD. Um, so the, the new system, broad center, and two more radical parties um, in opposition, left and right. Interesting also that SPD said, uh, we don't enter in a, in a new Merkel government, not based on policies, but based on our needs as a party. We need to recover, uh, we need to find a new purpose and a, no, a new uh, program. So what does this mean for Europe? Uh, we heard the Macron speech yesterday um, coming up with uh, a large grant design for Europe, which is, in my view, very French. Um, he, he talked about uh, sovereignty on a European level. I think this is because he's an economist and, and not a lawyer. As a lawyer, he would probably not have used sovereignty for his vision uh, of Europe because actually it's not about a European sovereign. Um, it's, it's about uh, more institutional cooperation um, in the EU. Maybe the end version is a European state, uh, but I, don't, I doubt whether this will fly in France and in large parts of Europe. Um, anyway, there is the offer, there's the, there's the invitation to tango now from France, and, and one issue is defense, and this was the top issue on, on Macron, in Macron's speech. Uh, there's also an English version on, on, the, on the website of the uh, uh, French uh, president where he gives an, a short summary of, of, uh, of his plans, and defense obviously is number one. He wants um, a, a European uh, intervention capacity, um, not the Eurocore. We have several uh, um, instruments already, but he obviously wants something new, and he obviously wants this to be um, directed towards Africa, uh, so an intervention capacity uh, in Africa. This is not new. This is what France wants from Germany and from the EU. Um, then we have... Um, uh, he spoke also about um, migration, about um, as a joint asylum policy. I think this is something where Germany and France can easily agree on, uh, uh, get more, so first more joint border control. We have the European uh, border uh, agency, but uh, border control remains ultimately in the hands of the member states because they don't want to delegate this to the EU to have uh, border control or, or border patrol coming from, I don't know, Brussels or other countries and suddenly uh, taking over from the national authorities. No, that's until now this is a no-go. I think Germany and France could uh, agree on, 
on progress on that issue, and, and we don't have a joint asylum policy. Each country admits asylum seekers according to its own. I mean, there, there are some, uh, reg some regulation from the EU, but ultimately every country can uh, decide who is a citizen. Um, in, in its country. But I think their, their Germany would be flexible also because it's in the, in the in, um, envious position uh, to being, being surrounded um, of other EU member states so it has no uh, asylum seekers cannot directly enter Italy, Spain, um, probably Greece have different uh, views. Um, but I think this is something interesting uh, it's very high on Merkel's agenda. It's high on the agenda of the Greens and of FDP. FDP actually came up with, we need you know, something like um, a program for, uh, to reorganize the whole immigration issue with have finally an immigration law in Germany, which we don't have. So, and there's always this discussion, should we, shouldn't we have something more like Canada where we can admit people that we want and then keep the asylum track separate from immigration. Um, so I think that there is, there is an interest in Germany, uh, uh, FDP, uh, Greens, Merkel. So there is a coalition for reform uh, with regard to asylum and immigration. But this is going to be very difficult with Central Europe. So how do you put this on an EU level with a Central Europe that is not at all ready to um, play along the lines that we in Western Europe uh, are used to play? So this is, this is very difficult to do on an EU level. Maybe, on a, uh, maybe there's a coalition of the willing, but on the other hand, then you have the Schengen system, which, which you cannot take some countries out of the Schengen system and have their own <coughs> as, uh, asylum law. It's, it's very tricky, but at least I think I, I would expect that there is something to, you know, something going to happen. At least there is a mutual interest in France and Germany. Um, defense, I talked about, uh, just to add to the defense question, um, I see uh, Germany and France on defense on two different planets. So Germany is really, it's all about the East. It's not about the South. Okay, um, then people tell me, well, we saw Merkel going to Africa, but the, the agenda in Africa is aid and uh, taking back refugees, uh, readmission, readmission and aid. So it's, you, you won't get uh, you know, any German uh, excited about military intervention in Mali. Um, this, is, this is just something, Germans support France with softer means, but not with, um, with, uh, with serious troops. And, this is not something you can sell in Germany. Um, because then if you say in Germany, okay, France is doing this war on terror. Let's go with France and fight terror in Africa. It's, it's the easiest, it would be a recipe for, to losing any, any election and any debate in Germany. Um, so Germans do something to keep France happy, but this is very limited on the defense side. <coughs> So, so the, the big dream of Macron and, and other former presidents to have a European um, intervention force that, that would uh, make it easier for France to do what it considers its uh, mission in Africa, uh, I don't think that there will be much progress. Um, as I said, on, on migration, there, there, is some, there is some room, but it's going to be difficult on an EU level. And then we have, of course, the euro. And Macron didn't talk about the euro yesterday, probably because he had been told, you know, don't, don't put too much pressure on Merkel right now, as she is in the process of coalition building. That's, that's a bad moment. Um, let's talk about it later. But uh, of course, there are, uh, Macron talked already about the EU several times. And we know he talked about a very big eurozone budget a European finance minister, and, 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 and other proposals are, are floating around. Um, will, what will Germany do? My guess is that Germany will take what the French put on the table and reduce, you know, 
reduce it to 20, 30 percent and agree. Yeah? So, or uh, make some counter proposals that are not very costly. But there remains a fundamental difference in economic philosophy. And in view how, uh, how to deal with the euro, with the crisis, uh, what is sane economic policy? For Germany, uh, it's well known, especially also in, in Spain, it's about reform, uh, it's about uh, compet competitiveness, it's about each country is, is needs to um, uh, do its, its, its homework, and um, it's r rather less about um, a joint management of the economy. I think Germany is ready for crisis intervention, crisis management, so they're, they're ready to pay, as we saw with Greece, if there is, is an emergency uh, to save the euro, to keep uh, the, the project alive. Germans don't want to kill the euro, certainly not. It was a German chancellor who pushed this against uh, the majority in, in Germany. So Germans are ready to save the euro if necessary, but they don't think large transfers are the right way to deal with this. And they, they won't say so all the time, I and mean, some, some say so, and, but this is just a very broadly supported view. It's a, it's a, it's a different way to, uh, to deal with uh, the economy. And so I, I don't expect um, that all these hopes of um, many in France, may, many probably also in other southern countries, uh, many Anglo-American economists who believe that the euro can only be on a stable footing if there is a full banking union, if there is uh, there are measures that uh, bring countries closer together with regard to the structure of their economy. Um, I don't see this coming. So, um, and I don't think that there's a big. It's going to be a big change with the with the new government uh, compared to the old one. Uh, my latest point, and I want to make it short and, and not uh, not bother you with things that, that you're not interested in. Uh, so I'm I'm very glad that we have this small format and have more questions and answers. So my last point is um, the broader German foreign policy. Uh, the new government, the new coalition uh, will be more, uh, I hesitate to say, but let's say uh, pro-Western. The old one was also pro-Western, but there was a strong push from Steinmeier and then Gabriel um, to overcome the tensions with Russia. Um, the Greens are firmly in, in the, I would say, pro-Ukraine camp in, in Germany. Um, uh, Marie-Louise Beck, who is a Green MP, or has been a Green MP, she's leaving Bundestag, she was a m major advocate in, in Germany for um, supporting Ukraine, reforming Ukraine. Um, the Greens have a lot of contacts, uh, especially the Bell Foundation, uh, uh, with dissidents in, in Russia and, and they're very active in Central Europe, uh, Eastern Europe. So I think the Greens will be very firm um, with uh, regard to Russia. Um, on NATO, the Greens have been in the past, of course, they are emerged from the peace movement. They, they, they have been very anti-NATO, but this is long gone. We know all Joschka Fischer, uh, 1999 intervention. Um, uh, this was really a turning point for the Greens where they have accepted that uh, NATO is essential and that the Americans are not uh, evil. Um, now the, the, the Linke, the radical leftist party, is, anti, is the only anti-NATO we have in Germany. Um, the Greens, um, yeah, they are, they are more, uh, and especially Özdemir, more like Joschka Fischer in their overall position, pro-Western, pro-liberal, and uh, uh, accepting that, that there sometimes needs to be also military power uh, in order to fight the bad guys. Um, FDP is not very uh, 
prof doesn't have a strong profile on foreign policy. Uh, Lindner, it's, it's mostly about domestic issues. He made some noises uh, on, on, on Crimea during the campaign, but it, this was rather, uh, I think, to signal to certain segments of voters that, um, that he's also uh, open for those issues. But the foreign policy is not a priority for FDP. Um, The most likely, the, 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 the name that is, is being floated right now for the foreign ministry is Özdemir. Uh, and uh, as I said, uh, it's, he's very much in, in, in the line of Joschka Fischer. Um, there may be some problems with problems. He may put an em emphasis on Turkey. Uh, he's from Turkish uh, um, family, uh, first genera second generation born in Germany. Actually, his family is Circassian, rather from, from the uh, Caucasus. Um, and, uh, but Turkey is a, is a, is a, is a very multinational uh, country with many uh, people from, from the Eastern Caucasus region as well. So he, he has been very tough uh, with Erdogan, um, calling uh, for uh, a travel, travel warning. This is something that the foreign ministry did not do yet, uh, in, in the in the row uh, with Erdogan, there was back and forth between Germany and Turkey, and, and they, but uh, they refrained from doing a travel a travel warning for Turkey, um, which Erdogan uh, um, has advocated. But let's see. After the elections, is always different from before the elections. I think he's very much in line also with Merkel on foreign policy, with with her general line, and I don't see. FDP making, causing bigger problems. However, yeah, they need to stick to the line, no transfer union. Um, so, so they may, may be a little bit of a problem. Um, but they're not a big problem because Merkel also doesn't want a transfer union. This is, this is really a red line. This is what she experienced during the whole euro crisis. Uh, the transfer union really brought a AFD, the party that is now anti-immigration, was before anti-euro. It all did the whole debate about bigger transfers and, and, and the, the no to transfer union in Germany has uh, really um, the, the ri almost ripped FDP apart. So then part of uh, those who were FDP went to AFD. And for Merkel, this is a clear warning sign. There's, there's a red line in the conservative specter of uh, her party um, in the center, um, center right, many lawyers, uh, professionals, so on, so on. Uh, German economists uh, are uh, vividly opposed to this. And uh, so the red line is there for Merkel. She doesn't need Lindner for that. But as I said, there will be something. She, she is, of course, aware that she needs to give something to to Macron. But this this will be negotiated, I think, in spring, and uh, will certainly they will come out and claim victory and a, a, a big step forward for Europe. But whether this is really going to change the the, the structural um, architecture and the setting of how the uh, the eurozone works. Uh, I would put uh, at least five question marks there. And speaking about question marks, thank you very much for listening to me.